How can public and school shootings be solved in the United States of America? They think people should be able to fight without weapons. This would provide an outlet for people, such as wrestling, martial arts class, or boxing. Solving the issue of active shootings in America is a complex challenge that requires a multifaceted approach, including policy changes, mental health support, and societal interventions. While encouraging nonviolent conflict resolution methods like martial arts or boxing could be part of the solution, broader changes are needed to address the root causes. Here's how these and other strategies could help. One, promoting nonviolent outlets, martial arts and boxing. Martial arts, boxing, and other physical activities can provide a healthy outlet for aggression, stress relief, and emotional control. These sports not only teach discipline and self-defense, but also help individuals channel their emotions positively. Example, communities can encourage martial arts programs, especially for youth, to teach conflict resolution, respect, and emotional control. This could offer an alternative to weapon-based violence and provide a sense of empowerment without resorting to firearms. Benefit. Learning how to fight without weapons encourages self-discipline and self-control, making people less likely to resort to extreme violence in tense situations. 2. Conflict resolution education. Teaching de-escalation skills, schools, workplaces, and communities could benefit from teaching conflict resolution skills. By learning to resolve disputes without violence, people can avoid conflicts escalating into life-threatening situations. Example, schools can integrate social-emotional learning SEL programs that teach empathy, active listening, and conflict resolution from an early age. These programs equip individuals with the tools to defuse arguments without violence. 3. Mental health support. Early intervention for mental health. Many active shooters have unresolved mental health issues. Improving access to mental health care and creating destigmatized spaces where people feel comfortable seeking help could prevent many violent incidents. Example, expanding mental health services in schools, workplaces, and communities can catch signs of distress or violent tendencies early, providing support before they manifest in extreme actions. Benefit, early mental health intervention can prevent individuals from turning to violence as a means of coping with their struggles. Four, community programs and engagement. Engaging at risk youth, many shooters are isolated or marginalized individuals. Programs that provide mentoring, community support, and positive role models can help integrate people into their communities, reducing the likelihood of violent outbursts. Example, community centers could offer free or subsidized martial arts classes, boxing programs, or other forms of physical activity to channel aggression, build self-esteem, and foster a sense of belonging. Benefit, stronger community connections and mentorship can reduce feelings of isolation, a common factor in many cases of mass violence. Five, tightening gun control measures, common sense gun regulation, limiting access to firearms, especially for individuals with violent histories or mental health issues, could help reduce the frequency of mass shootings. Example, policies such as universal background checks, red flag laws, which allow firearms to be taken from individuals deemed a threat, and restrictions on high-capacity magazines are often suggested to prevent shootings. Benefit, reducing access to firearms for those who are more likely to use them irresponsibly can lower the number of active shootings. Six, promoting positive masculinity, reframing masculine identity. A significant number of shooters are young men who may feel pressured by toxic masculinity, where violence is seen as a form of strength. Encouraging alternative models of masculinity that value emotional vulnerability, empathy, and self-control could help reduce violence. Example, educational programs that redefine strength as the ability to handle conflict peacefully and process emotions constructively can help change cultural norms around masculinity. Benefit, teaching young men that physical aggression is not the only way to resolve conflict or express frustration can reduce the inclination toward violent actions. Seven, improving school and workplace safety, preventative security measures, enhancing safety protocols in schools and workplaces such as secure entryways, improved threat assessment, and regular drills, can reduce casualties during shootings and even deter potential shooters. Example, schools and workplaces can invest in stronger psychological safety measures like anonymous tip lines for reporting suspicious behavior in addition to physical security upgrades. Eight, media and cultural influence, Limiting glorification of violence, the media often inadvertently glorifies shooters by giving them attention, which can inspire others. By changing how incidents are reported and focusing more on the victims and solutions rather than the perpetrators, we can reduce the copycat effect. 
Example, media outlets can adopt ethical guidelines that minimize the naming and showcasing of shooters, focusing instead on community healing and the impact of the event. Benefit, decreasing the focus on shooters may reduce the desire for fame that motivates some individuals to commit violent acts. Conclusion, while martial arts and boxing can offer a constructive outlet for aggression, addressing active shootings in America requires a combination of cultural, educational, mental health, and legislative reforms. Encouraging physical outlets alongside comprehensive support for mental health, conflict resolution, and responsible firearm regulation can create an environment where individuals are less likely to resort to violence. Why are there more school shootings in the present time compared to the past? There are several factors contributing to the increase in school shootings in recent times compared to the past. This issue is multifaceted, involving societal, cultural, psychological, and systemic changes over time. Here are some key reasons. One, increased access to firearms availability. There is a significant increase in access to firearms in the United States. The ease of purchasing or acquiring guns, particularly semi-automatic weapons, allows individuals, including minors, to commit acts of violence more easily. Lax gun laws. Some states have more relaxed gun laws, making it easier for individuals, including those with mental health issues or criminal histories, to acquire firearms. 2. Mental health issues. Untreated mental health problems, mental health challenges such as depression, anxiety, and trauma are more prevalent today. While mental health disorders are not direct causes of violence, untreated issues combined with access to firearms can lead to tragic outcomes. Inadequate mental health support. Although awareness of mental health issues has grown, access to effective and timely treatment remains limited for many individuals. Many school shooters exhibit warning signs of emotional distress, but interventions are often not available or insufficient. 3. Cultural shifts and isolation increase social isolation. Many individuals today experience greater feelings of isolation and alienation due to factors like broken family structures, bullying, and social media. Loneliness and social rejection can push vulnerable individuals toward violent expressions of their frustrations. Toxic online communities, the rise of online communities, can exacerbate feelings of isolation or hatred. Some groups may radicalize individuals or glamorize violent behavior, encouraging acts of violence as a way to gain attention or power. 4. Copycat effect and media influence media glorification. The intense media coverage of school shootings can inspire future shooters seeking notoriety. Studies suggest a copycat effect, where mass shooters mimic previous events, particularly because the perpetrators often become infamous. Violent media and video games. While the role of violent media movies video games is debated, some argue that the constant exposure to violence in entertainment might desensitize individuals to real-world violence, although this is not seen as a primary cause. 5. Breakdown of family and community structures Dysfunctional family environments Some school shooters come from unstable or abusive family backgrounds, which can foster feelings of anger, resentment, and a lack of emotional support. A breakdown in family and community support systems can leave individuals without the necessary tools to cope with difficulties in life. Loss of strong community ties, schools and communities used to play a stronger role in raising children and providing emotional and moral support. Today, fragmented communities and reduced social cohesion have weakened these safety nets. 6. Bullying and social pressures, bullying and harassment. Bullying, especially in schools, has always been a problem, but cyberbullying has made it worse. The constant and public nature of cyberbullying can lead to feelings of hopelessness or revenge, pushing some individuals toward violence. Pressure and stress. Modern students often face intense pressure to succeed academically, socially, and athletically. Combined with mental health struggles, these pressures can contribute to feelings of inadequacy or anger. 7. Desensitization to violence. Cultural normalization of violence. Violence is more visible and accessible today, whether through media, movies, video games, or the news. Repeated exposure to violent imagery and acts can desensitize individuals, making violence seem like an acceptable or inevitable solution to problems. Acceptance of violence as conflict resolution. In some environments, violence is increasingly seen as a legitimate way to solve problems. The glorification of revenge or violent solutions in certain parts of culture may exacerbate this issue. 8. Lack of preventative.
punitive measures, insufficient school safety measures, many schools still lack effective security systems, mental health resources, or early warning programs that can help identify troubled students. While some schools have improved their security, others remain vulnerable to potential shooters, missed warning signs. In many school shooting cases, there were clear warning signs, social media posts, troubling behavior or threats, but these signs went unnoticed or were not acted upon by parents, teachers, or law enforcement in time. 9. Social media amplification, online radicalization and attention seeking. Social media provides a platform where individuals can express violent thoughts, seek validation, or connect with others who may share harmful views. It can amplify feelings of anger, isolation, or desire for notoriety, leading some to act violently. Instant fame, shooters may see violence as a way to gain instant fame or infamy, as social media and the news quickly spread information about incidents. 10. Polarization and anger. In society, political and social division, society is more polarized today, with increased anger and divisiveness in political and social discourse. This environment may fuel personal grievances, making violent retaliation against perceived wrongs more likely. Conclusion. The rise in school shootings is the result of multiple factors, including increased access to firearms, untreated mental health issues, social isolation, the influence of violent media, and a lack of early interventions. Solutions need to be comprehensive, focusing on gun control, mental health support, bullying prevention, school security, and creating a culture of non-violence and empathy. These issues are deeply intertwined, and addressing only one aspect won't solve the problem but a multi-pronged approach could reduce the frequency and severity of these tragic events. Which states in the United States have the most violence in 2024? In 2024, states with the highest rates of violence, particularly related to gun violence and violent crime, include Mississippi, Louisiana, New Mexico, Alabama, and Alaska. These states tend to have high rates of gun ownership and fewer restrictions on firearms, contributing to their elevated violent crime rates. For example, Mississippi has the highest rate of gun deaths per capita, with approximately 33.9 gun deaths per 100,000 people. Louisiana follows with 29.1 deaths per 100,000, and New Mexico has 27.8. These states consistently show high rates of homicides, aggravated assaults, and other forms of violent crime. Additionally, Alaska and Wyoming also report high rates of gun violence due to the combination of high firearm ownership and lower population density which can lead to slower emergency response times. Other states such as Tennessee and Missouri also feature prominently in violent crime statistics, driven by high rates of assault and homicide in urban areas. Major cities and states like Maryland, e.g., Baltimore, Michigan, Detroit, and Tennessee, Memphis, are known for their persistently high violent crime rates. Overall, these trends are influenced by a mix of socioeconomic factors, gun availability, and local crime enforcement policies. States with stricter gun control laws, like Massachusetts and New York, tend to have lower rates of gun violence. Which countries have the most school shootings in 2024? In 2024, the United States continues to lead the world in school shootings by a significant margin, with far more incidents compared to other countries. Between 2009 and 2018, the U.S. experienced 288 school shootings, while the country with the second highest number, Mexico, had only eight. Other countries, such as Canada, Germany, and Brazil, have had a few school shootings over the years, but they occur far less frequently than in the U.S. This stark contrast is largely due to the widespread availability of firearms in the U.S.